What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. We are one day away from the new year, so happy new year to everybody. Y'all know I don't do no drinking, so my mama got me the Welch's Sparkling Grape Juice because she know this is what I'm into since I don't drink, right? She went to Walmart and got that for your boy, so thanks, mama, because my mama watches my channel a lot. So let's get to the topic at hand, right? I'm sorry, I messed up the camera. Sorry about that. So Sharon Moore, coach of the Michigan Wolverines in Jim Harbaugh's absence slash suspension, Sharon, a reporter asked Michigan coach Sharon more about Jalen Milrow's comments on Bill O'Brien suggesting he changed positions, right? Bill O'Brien was previously uh, at Alabama, and what was Bill O'Brien? He was the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach previously when Jalen Milrow was there. Jalen Milrow was talking about how Bill O'Brien was suggesting that he needs to change positions, that he won't make it as a quarterback he can't play quarterback. He needs to go to another position and try something else. And so, you know, he talked about that and how, you know, he gets to have the last laugh now because, hey, he got Alabama playing well. Um, he's the quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide, and he got them rolling after a rocky start. And so that triggered a conversation about uh, the stereotyping of black quarterbacks, guys who are mobile, who are athletic, who are, who are speedy, et cetera, who aren't, who aren't traditional pocket passers. People always labeled them as, hey, you're a DB, you're a running back, et cetera. You are a, um, uh, you're a wide receiver and all of that. And how now he's proving those stereotypes to be wrong. And so they asked Sharon more about those, uh, about Bill O'Brien, about Jalen Milrow's comments on Bill O'Brien suggesting he changed positions. And they asked him about where he thinks, where he thinks black quarterbacks stand today from a stereotyping standpoint. And this is the response that Sharon Moore, black man, that's coach in Michigan, this, this is what he said. He said, really, I don't see color. My wife is Caucasian. My kids are mixed. I deal with black, white. I've lived in Kansas where you can be in a house with the door open at 12. And I lived in New Jersey where you have to be in the house by six o'clock. I've seen all cards of the spectrum. I'm going to repeat that. He said, when they asked him about where he thinks black quarterbacks stand today from a stereotyping standpoint, the man said, really, I don't see color. My wife is Caucasian. My kids are mixed. I deal with black, white. I've lived in Kansas, I've lived in Kansas where you can be in a house with the door open at 12, and in New Jersey where you have to be in the house by 6 o'clock. I've seen all cards of the spectrum. See, this is what Dr. Umar was talking about right here. Being pro-black and having a non-black spouse, man, it's hard to be pro-black when you got a non-black spouse because what you end up doing is like nobody protects whiteness like a black person with a white spouse. I don't care what nobody say. Nobody protects whiteness like a black person with a white spouse. The opinions of race relations and racism uh, when it comes to black folks who date or marry out is often compromised. I'll say that again. The opinions of race relations and racism, when it comes to black folks who date or marry outside of the race, is often compromised. Their opinions are, their opinions are compromised. Their allegiance is messed up most, most of the time, right? Because they start thinking about, hey, if I respond to this question, you know, with a lot of pro-blackness, what is my, my, my wife or my husband's parents or grandparents or siblings going to think? What are they going to think about me, right? If I say something that's in the favor of black folks or I say something that's protecting black folks in regard in regards to race relations, will they be upset with me? You know what I mean? Sharon thinking, hey, will my wife get a phone call? Will my wife get a phone call and say, hey, Rebecca, I don't know her name. You know, I'm just saying <laughs> whatever her name is, right? Hey, you know, we heard Sh me and me and mom and dad, we heard Sharon talking and he was talking a little bit, sounding a little bit like Malcolm X. He was sounding a little bit like Minister Farrakhan. You know, he was sounding a little bit like, you know, Elijah Muhammad, a little bit Nation of Islami. I don't like that. Tell him, can he dial it back a little bit? You know what I mean? We need a little bit dial it back. He was sounding a little bit too Malcolm X's, X-ish. He was a little bit too extreme, a little bit too radical. He don't want his wife getting on phone calls. He don't want to worry about, hey, what are they going to think about me? Are they going to be upset with me? So I'm going to say something that has nothing to do with what the fuck I was asked. Okay? Not like, because what does your wife being white, what does your kids being biracial have to do with whether black quarterbacks are still stereotyped today? That don't have nothing to do with that. He answered and talking in circles because he don't want to offend his, um, his white uh, in-laws. He don't want to offend them. He don't. So I, and I'm going to say this. I don't trust no black person or man or woman who says, I don't see color. That shit makes me itch, okay? When you a black person and you say that, stay the fuck away from me. I need to add that to the list of the video. Remember that video I made when I said black men who, who 
Some, certain black men scare me. I'm not. This ain't just. This ain't just for black men. Black folks in general who say shit like I don't see color. You need to stay the fuck away from me because I know your opinions have been compromised. I know you've been compromised, and I know you're a little dangerous. You down to throw us under the bus? Throw us under the goddamn train track when it comes to protecting the feelings of folks that you are around a lot due to marriage or relationship, et cetera. You know what I mean? You don't want to seem like you're being too pro black or against them. You know, you don't want to, so you don't keep it a hundred. You don't keep it a buck. You don't keep it a hundred. You don't say the real shit. You're going to dance all around the topic because you don't want to make them uncomfortable. Your white in-laws or your non-black in-laws. You don't want to make them uncomfortable with that racy talk. Nah, bro, get the fuck on. You know what I mean? You can respect your marriage in your kids without trading in your black card, brother. I'm talking to Sharon Moore, okay? Since your wife is white and your kids are biracial and you lived in nice neighborhoods and also rough neighborhoods, black quarterbacks and people can't be discriminated against or stereotyped in a negative way because you lived in good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, and your wife is white and your kids biracial. You don't, people can't be discriminated against. What the fuck? What type of response was that? You know what I mean? And I know you see color, brother, because you acknowledge, you pointed out that your wife was white in that response you gave, okay? So I know you see color. And furthermore, brother, your name is Sharon. Sharon, I know damn well you see color because non-black folks, they saw it on you a mile away when they look at your name on documentation. Yeah, Sharon, definitely African-American, def definitely a Negro, you know, <laughs> definitely a Negroidian, okay? He's one of them. <laughs> You're definitely one of those individuals, you know? So cut it out. I don't see color. And furthermore, because I know it's going to be some people in the comments, well, why can't he see color? This is what the world is messed up, man. People want to keep talking about race. That's why the world is messed up. That's why we can't get anywhere because you guys want to keep talking about race. Hey, listen, I'm going to say this. To say I don't see color is the same as saying I am willfully ignoring a huge piece of what makes you you, right? And you got to see a black person. I'm a black man. I'm a man, but I'm a black man. You got to see that I'm a black man to recognize black folks' plight, history, and things that we that, that have been harming or affecting our community, such as systemic racism and racial discrimination. You got to acknowledge my blackness. I'm sorry. I'm, don't just look at me as just a guy. Acknowledge my blackness, okay? Because I'm black, and I'm going to tell you I'm black. I'm not going to be a, hey I'm, a, hey, I'm just a guy. No, I'm black, okay? Because being black has affected the way I move in America. The way I do things, the way I carry myself in certain situations, the way I go about thinking about certain things, and it, and it affects other black people too. When they get in their houses of praise, they take all the black pictures away because they know when you black, that shit, they, they, when they know you black, that shit going to be at a lower scale than it is if they think you're white. Your house going to get a praise for way more if they think you're white or non-black. Okay, when they think you're black, hey, Negroes in here, we'll cut it in half, okay? We'll get it, <laughs> cut it in half of what it's really worth. They'll do that to you. And, you know, and black folks, we we know that. So we ain't got time to be acting like race don't exist. But you know, this brother Sharon, he's been away. You know, he's married outside of the outside of the black race. And I think now he feel like he gotta keep protecting the feelings of his in-laws and people he works amongst. And I knew something wasn't right with that brother when I saw him on when I saw him on TV crying his eyes out. Crying his goddamn eyes out after Michigan first game without Jim Harbaugh there. Brother crying out as if Jim Harbaugh died or some shit. I'm looking like, bro, if you don't stop all that crying, dog. Harbaugh was right up the road at his house with his feet his feet kicked up at the fireplace, still raking in millions. Still raking in millions, and you up here on TV crying about him not being at the game. If you don't stop all that goddamn crying like your mama died or something, brother, knock it the fuck off. But see, this is what Dr. Umar is talking about, man. When you, and I'm not, I'm, and I'm not saying all black folks who, are, who marry outside of their race are like this. But a lot of times when a, when a black person marries outside of their race or dating outside of their race, a lot of them, a lot of them worry about protecting the whiteness, the, about protecting their spouse and protecting white their whiteness, right, a lot of times or whatever, right? They will, again, have compromised opinions about race relations. They'll water shit down. They'll say things like race doesn't matter and I don't think about race and none of that. They'll say all of those things. They'll talk around subjects where black people are being clearly discriminated against and where we need your black voice to tell folks the truth. Tell your people that's around you the truth. You start becoming hush. 
you start downplaying shit because you don't want to rub them the wrong way. You don't want to offend them because your allegiance now lies with them because you married to, you married to them, right? You seeing them all at all the family functions, all the events. So you don't want to seem like you're being too radical for their comfort. And so you try to say anything around them that will make them comfortable, even if it's throwing black folks under the bus or denying certain issues that are present, that are affecting black people. You were denied them and act like you don't know what the fuck is going on to protect the comfortability and, and, and yeah, the comfortability of your white in-laws and your white spouse or non-black spouse. I should say non-black too, because you can do it with an Asian person, Hispanic person. You can do it at all, all of the, the above, Arab, all of that. I see black, a lot of black folks do it all the time. They act like they don't know racism exists because they don't want to offend nobody. And that ain't real shit, okay? And we've seen it with Tamara, Tamara Mallory. Ma uh, Mallory. She married uh, the white guy, and her husband was saying all type of shit with racist undertones and little dog whistles he was making while he was reporting some stuff and all of that. And she and he kept doing it because that's how I know she really probably didn't check him. She ain't check it accordingly because hey, you know I don't want to make him seem like I'm his enemy and I don't want to I don't want to hurt his feelings and all of that, right? You know, and Tamara and Tia are mixed race as well because their father is white or Italian or something like that. And their mom is black. Uh, but yeah, man, like and then you see it with this brother right here, Sharon Moore. Right. His his opinions are compromised because he's married outside of the community and he don't want to offend his wife. He don't want to offend her family by just being real and not saying anything wrong or denigrating to white folks. You just keeping it a buck. You can't even do that because you're afraid of what they're going to think. So it's hard for folks that are married to non-black spouse to keep it up to, to be pro-black. For real. And I'm not saying everybody that's not that married outside of their race aren't like that. Every black person that married outside of their race aren't like that, but a lot of them are. And even, even if they aren't, they've a lot of, I know they feel conflicted. They feel conflicted at night. You know what I mean? Because if you say something, you're worrying about, hey. I don't know how this is going to land with the in-laws. They might be looking at me funny. They might not want to come around. You know, all of that shit. That, it, all of that goes all and plays all together. They have compromised opinions a lot of times about race relations because they don't want to hurt hurt their in-laws' feelings. You know, so, yeah, it, this this situation right here proved Dr., proves Dr. Umar's point to me, honestly, man. And so... Yeah, I just saw this shit like, wow, look at the perfect timing of this whole situation, man. Crazy. Taking a sip of my little you dig, dig. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just like, wow, look at this brother. I don't see color. My wife is white. All that. What? 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 You know, he want to get on his Brian Gumble act. Because he don't want his wife to make it to look like Malcolm X or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Or uh, he don't want to look like, um, I don't know, Farrakhan. You know? 